Okay, it is WAN show time again. It has been a very challenging three weeks. So I was talking to, um, I don't know, I was talking to a couple of people about it today because it was such an a, a, a astonishing realization for me that I just had to share it with everybody. Um, in the last three weeks, I have spent only six out of 15 days working on our like daily content. Wow. Five days I was out for Tech Showdown. Yeah. Three days I've been basically out for ROG Rig Reboot. Yep. And then one day I was out for Ultra Wide Festival. <laughs> so you throw in a few WAN shows. Yeah. And I have actually had almost no time to work on like our normal content. So on the one hand, it's great that we're like getting any of it done. So that's cool. But on the other hand, like, I haven't actually gotten to goof around with tech in so long. <laughs> like I, okay, the kinds of projects that I have on the go right now. Okay, I have a, uh, a Threadripper uh, IHS transplant to do. So I wanna put the Vanity Linus Tech Tips one on a working chip. Nice, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's nice if I can ever do it. <laughs> I wanna break out the old chiller. Oh, I thought you were saying like these were things you're progressing and, and on. And go, no, no, I'm making no progress. Oh. I want to go sub-zero. I want to do the final office update for the, uh, for the uh, window TV. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I, you know what? I should, I should bring up Trello. I should have a look at all the other like crazy stuff that I'm supposed to be doing right See, now. See, I don't get to play with that kind of technology anymore, but like... Um, you need to change your handle, man. But the, Xiaomi Mi Mix 2? Yeah. Okay, got to yeah. get my review done of that. Like, look, look at the screen on this thing. It's upside down. Well, yeah. It's wow. Down. But look at that. The whole thing. Whole thing's a screen. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And that's cool. That software. Cool. Software is terrible. Software is terrible. Um, <laughs> software needs some work. Um, I don't get to play with that kind of tech, but uh, Boiler. I'm not going to say your whole handle. You need to figure out someone else, dude. Um, has been like contributing to the sales open source, which is super cool and some cool things have happened this week. We had that meeting thing, which I'm sure didn't help at all with your being able to work on uh, mainline yeah. content stuff. But float plane, float plane progress, right? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Hopefully, Man. dude, if you're out there, take the job, come work with us. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. We, uh, we, need, we need skilled developers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other cool you, stuff. Okay, yeah. Most insane SSD setup. So six 960 Pros running in RAID zero. Nice. On Threadripper. Nice. Like, actually, that one progress is being made because Ivan's working on it. But like, anyway, the point is, um, just, I think the most insane SSD setup is actually when that guy tied together like 50 of them like six years ago. So, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, you might have used newer technology, but like, you said SSD setup. In general, so like just saying. Anyways, for news this week, we have a bunch of different stuff. One, NCIX Tech Tips is like gone. It's in limbo, that's for sure. For now, mm -hmm. maybe coming back. Google announces the Pixel Two and Pixel Two XL. Uh, and Intel is renaming their KB Lake Pentiums. It's super dumb. It's like the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. And, uh, oh, right, we'll roll the intro now. Boop! It's interesting because we have a few pieces of Intel news in here, which has not been super common for a while because it's all been AMD news, but it's like not good stuff. Um, you know, I actually probably want to talk about that because. Yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, I, I do have some. I do have some stuff to say about that. Are you going to talk about this, by the way? Um, yeah, I will. Okay. Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, Max. I'll I'll do that for you. I totally forgot. I remoted into my computer and then I just didn't do it. I tried unlocking your computer. It didn't work. Nope. My computer uses a, a real password. Three. Yep. Unlike I know. Unlike everything else. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sorry guys, hold on a second. Okay, I just saved a V3. Thanks. And you're good. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you know what? Why don't we why don't we tackle Let's do the dumb Intel news first 
And then let's do the dumb cool? dumb oh. reaction to Intel news. Because oh. like honestly, I was pretty um I was pretty frustrated with the community's reaction to certain aspects of Coffee Lake and the launch and oh. our review of it. Okay. Um because I haven't looked into this. It was it was Pretty dumb. Uh, so Numlock21 posted on the forum. The original article here is from Tech Power Up. And I'll get it in Twitch chat oh, right now. Rats. Hold on. Um, 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 um. <laughs> um, yeah! yeah! All right. <laughs> Intel to rebrand Pentium as Pentium Gold. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. Wait, why? Okay, so it's all part of like an overarching stupid thing. Hold on, I'm just gonna turn the apertures uh, more but, more open a bit, one sec. What, I'm so confused. Is this only for the hot, oh. Sorry, one second, guys. This is kind of silly. Okay. I think we just needed so low power, low power Gemini Lake SOCs will bear the Pentium Silver brand. Besides Celeron, is there Pentium Bronze? I don't see a Pentium Bronze. So there's Pentium Silver and Pentium Gold. So basically, as far as I can tell, <sighs> Intel hired some kind of new like senior VP of branding or marketing or like product naming or whatever that position is where you yeah. actually make the decision about what to call the product and they did the unthinkable they managed to make Intel's naming scheme worse, worse. it's impressive you know like to give them props yeah they found a way because they had the will they had Intel they were determined Intel hasn't named for a consumer, okay? Like, I'm not talking about, you know, Xeon or Itanium. Skull like, Trail. Itanium sounds pretty cool. Itanium the problem with Skull Trail is that it's a code name. Intel's code names are so good. Yeah. A lot of the time. Sometimes they're dumb. Skull Trail. A lot that of was so cool. Bone Trail. Oh my god. I mean, even stuff like Alpine Ridge. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool. I'd be like, yeah, I want like an Intel Alpine Ridge. Hell yeah. That's a Thunderbolt controller, by the way. It ended up... I mean, even Thunderbolt has a cool name. But on the CPU side, okay? So back, go way back in the day. It was like the 286 and the 386 and the 486 and all that made sense. And I know there are numbers, but people remember yeah, You got your generation yeah. and you got your, your instruction set, okay? X86. Pretty straightforward. Right? Cool. Then they got to five and they were like, no, let's not do 586. Let's go Pentium. And you know what? Not bad. Maybe part of it is that Pentium has basically existed since I've like had a computer. Well, no, actually that's not true. We had a uh, 386 that we then upgraded to a 486. I can understand that change though. You're going from -ROM. slightly less ultra hardcore. Yeah, you're, you're going. You're you're and then you and then you go generations of Pentium. Okay, and then Celeron. I was like, yeah, sure, okay, Celeron. Why not? Then came Core. <laughs> what? If it was actually how many cores they had. Then sure. Yeah. So if, if a core two was a dual core. Yeah. But yeah, but then you're like, you're backed into a corner. Cause what are you going to call that? What are you going to call the next generation? You would have to call it the core two, two. Do you remember core two quad though? Yes, core two duo, <laughs> core two quad. So you would have to say, I mean, you still have to do it. Yeah. You would have to say, yeah, I've got an Intel core two duo, dual core CP. <laughs> Bad. No. And then you got these indecipherable numbers at the end of them. And in Intel's defense, there is a legend on their site for how to decipher them. Yeah. But, you know, many of the numbers, like, never ended up getting incremented at all. So they might as well have just not had them. And Intel plans out their product roadmap so far in advance. Like, do they really need to leave you know, like a 50 there, just in case they <laughs> need to use it. Like, they, they never do it. Uh, so anyway, anyway, so we've been stuck with Core, Core i3, Core i5, Core i7 for a long time, and then at least Core i9 
made sense in the sense that it was a, a continuation of something that's been established over the last 10 years. If you want to show off how ridiculous this is, just show our Intel naming videos on TechWiki. Yeah, uh, I think it's got like 6 million views. Like, what is, uh, uh, what is Core i7 uh, videos? Yeah, hold on here, I'll bring this up. Uh, 7 million. Like, it keeps on trucking, this one. And what then, is a Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 as fast as possible? Yeah. 7 million freaking views. Uh, what is a Core i9? That's got a million since three months ago. Like, people like, clearly understand it a little better now than they used to. But at least Core i9 had the advantage of continuity. And I sort think of. people aren't shopping for it as much. It's too expensive. And the other issue, too, though, is that they, they did kind of screw it up because if Core i9 had simply been high end desktop, yeah. then sure. But they've got Core i7s and Core i5s on the same platform. And oh man, 7740K or X, is it an X? I can't even remember, but whatever. The like the KB Lake chips on X299, they were super dumb when X299 launched. Now, they're like super, super mega ultra dumb. Because now that Coffee Lake has launched... 7740X. You would only be buying one of those if you were just a complete idiot. Or you were a professional overclocker looking for like per core records or something. Because Coffee Lake is overclocking pretty well. Five gigahertz, it looks pretty attainable. And not just for like people who are sorting through trays of CPUs. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, coming back to Pentium. So they brought back the Pentium brand um, after having gotten rid of it for many years. And they assigned it to their cheapo products. And I was kind of like, like that feels a little bit like- uh, It's kind of sad. Yeah, it's like reusing what used to be like top of the line, like cream of the cream and like going for like a nostalgia sale to someone who, yeah. like I guess in the sense it's like, it's if it's competitive with Intel's like old CPUs, like you'd have to be running something old enough to be a Pentium for it to be an upgrade. Right. Maybe that was the rationale, I don't know. That's um, like at least they didn't, at least they didn't pull an AMD where they brought back the FX branding oh. for like a super, super mainstream product. Because <laughs> remember guys, or maybe not remember, like, I'm gonna let you know, young people, <laughs> FX used to be $1,000, Yeah. period. You, you didn't buy an FX for less than $1,000. That was it, it was the cream of the cream. And then they brought back FX as like, super ultra mega rebranded stuff we had. <laughs> <laughs> it um, sounds cool, so it might sell some stuff. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, back to gold. As far as I can tell, Intel brought in some kind of rebranding executive who renamed all the Xeons according to this bronze, silver, gold, platinum naming scheme, and it makes no sense at all. I'd love to see internal numbers to see if anything changed when they did that. No, of course not. Oh, I know. But like, like, I would like to be able to represent my argument with facts. And it's so confusing because again, Intel's server products, the product names were a little confusing. Like uh, something, like a, like a 2687W. But it's like, you need such specific things. Yeah. It doesn't really matter if it's confusing. You're going to arc them all anyway. And if you know what a W is, a W is like a high power workstation chip, then you'd know it's not going to have the same like max core count as the ones that are designed yeah. for um, like tons of virtualization or whatever else. Um, and it's going to have like higher boost clocks. It's probably got a higher TDP. Like you could kind of piece it together if you were somewhat familiar with the lineup. Now, like a gold could be a high performance SKU that fits in this socket or that one, or like this dual platform one, it has to do with like the raw performance, but the features get left behind. And so now we're just, we're just like gonna just tack gold onto stuff. Like I just, it's just frustrating. So the name change comes with a refreshed case badge and a slightly modified box design. And uh, it'll be effective November 2nd, 2017. So basically gold, which is I don't want to say always tacky, but... It's pretty much always tacky. Usually tacky. Unless it's a rank in a competitive video game, it's tacky. Well, now hold on. Gold and black can look pretty good. 
I mean as like a product naming thing. Oh, oh yeah, that. No, that like, how dead is that? Like, yeah. when's the last time anyone did like bronze, silver, gold? You can use gold tastefully. It like, just has to be used properly. Like, remember when we were doing the support tiers on the forum, which incidentally are bronze, silver, and gold. We were, we were talking about it, and I was just like, you know what? I just don't have time to think about this. Let's just do bronze, silver, and gold. <laughs> but like. <laughs> But Intel, what's your excuse? I think ours is also pretty easy. There isn't any confusing, like, it doesn't actually follow the features, it only follows raw performance. Like, no, there's really Good, not much else you get. Yeah. You get a different colored badge, you get access to a better forum. Thank you for your contribution. That's ultimately what it is. <laughs> so... Not a better forum. Everything happens in the bronze forum. Spoiler alert. Yeah. There's a counting to 10,000 thread in the bronze forum, and the silver and gold forums are pretty much cobwebs. Hey, do you guys want to, uh, do you guys want to get some really cool insight into the way that YouTube does or doesn't deliver video notifications to subscribers? This is pretty cool. So, hold on, I'm actually gonna load up another, another tab here to give you guys some context for this. This is pretty cool. And I have some, I have some good Intel news in, in a moment here, but, um... Here, let's go ahead, let's bring up some analytics for this bad boy. Surprisingly, oh, a lot of people said no. About what? <laughs> Wanting to see this. Really? <laughs> there was definitely quite a few people that said yes as oh, well, but... okay. Well, whatever, it's cool, you'll like it. It's okay. probably trolls. So, here's the dashboard for one of our recent releases. So you can have a look at uh, what a video might typically do in the first hour. So this is our Core i7-8700K review, um, sitting at 690,000 views, and in the first hour it did about 84,000, followed by 72,000. This is a weird launch time, so this decay curve looks a little bit different than it normally would, but it's also not totally atypical. Yeah. All right, so in the last 60 minutes, Ooh. there goes a fly, it did about 3,400 views. Oh, you guys can't see that, whatever. That, you take my word for it, 3,400 views or so, okay. So YouTube's algorithm is so, I don't want to use the word smart. Damn. But what I'll say is it is so aggressive about targeting content that it, it thinks might be me trying to use my subscriber base as a way to communicate with the people that watch Linus Tech Tips. It's so sensitive to that that check this out. The WAN show a stream announcement video. I specifically uploaded at the same ish time every week with the same title every week. And YouTube's algorithm has got this thing crushed to the point where in the first hour, it is probably gonna do like, let's see, we're only doing about 140 like a views. of an hour, I think. Yeah. Something along those lines. It has only managed to do about 3,600 views in the last 20 minutes or so. Pretty crazy, hey? That's nuts. So you see, okay, this is an extreme example. And this is something where, you know what? Quite honestly, I could name it something else. And that would help more people get notifications for it. Um, but intentionally, I, I'm, I'm feeding into the algorithm here, allowing the algorithm to take the people who aren't interested in WAN show and just not pump them a notification. Like yeah. I'm okay with that because we just do it because we've always done it. And if it boosts the live viewers a little bit, then like, great, they know we're live, that's cool. For the people that do rely on that notification, if we don't put it up, some people do miss the WAN show. Um, but what this I is- I think there's is, also a fair amount of this to be clear, um, yeah. GladMax1 in the chat said, I see the YouTube video, I ignore it, and I hit the Twitch bookmark. So that might be part of why it gets buried. Either way, either, but, but that's one of the reasons that we, we continue to do it, just in case people are yeah. relying on it. Yeah. Um, but this is an extreme example of the way that YouTube does manipulate the way that it, uh, the way that it propagates new video information to someone who is subscribed. Um, and it's uh, it's one of those things that's frustrating. It's one of the reasons that we're we're starting Floatplane, and I was just kind of inspired to talk about it for some reason. I don't remember why anymore, but we can we can move on to our next topic. Um, all right. So I was a little I was actually a little disappointed in our in our viewers' reaction to the Coffee Lake video. Um, like there was an astonishing amount of ignorance 
in some of the comments uh, with respect to how um, how we would have manipulated what benchmarks we used. Like, and the, like the problem is that the arguments just don't even make any sense. Like, someone was upset that we didn't include the Ryzen 7 1800X um, as though we were trying to conceal AMD's superiority, um, and we didn't want AMD to seem like a better value. The 1800X is not a very good value. The best value Ryzen 7 is the 1700. Um, this 1800X is what, like 200 megahertz higher than the 1700X? Why, why, uh, how, how would that hurt AMD's value prop to throw in a processor that costs $100 more and is clocked 200 megahertz higher? How, how are we hurting AMD's appearance of value by choosing one of their chips that is a better value? Um, now, one thing that we didn't discuss in our video, and honestly, the funny thing is this like barely even came up. People are so fixated on um, you know the comparisons yeah. that they don't like, or and or don't understand, or whatever else that they didn't even notice this one. Um, what we should have discussed was some of the differences in platform cost, like the fact that a yeah. B350 board is cheaper than a Z370 board. Um, but just the number of people that are like. When we release a video that's positive about Intel, they're like, wow, you guys sure changed your tune so fast about being sponsored by them. No, we changed our tune because they released a different product that's different <laughs> than the one we said we didn't like. It's, it's, called, it's called looking at what's in front of you and evaluating it instead of just going in having already decided the answer. Um, Ah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Is it like is it as bad as the? Um, oh my God, they didn't benchmark with. Uh, wow, why can't I think of the name of it right now? Right now, future of OpenGL, Vulcan. Vulcan. Um, yeah, hard to say, hard to say. But uh, anyway, yeah. Apparently, we're doing damage control over Intel forcing customers to buy a new motherboard on the same socket. I wonder how much Intel paid him for this. Nothing. Nice. nice. So the way that that Great works, a 10 out of 10 comment. and unfortunately, I can't get anyone to go on the record about it, um, so I can't say who my source is, but what happened was Intel designed their platform for two generations of CPUs, the same way they have for the last 10 years. That's how it went, that's how it goes down. You cannot like it. And that's totally cool, and I totally get it. Um, but they designed it for two generations. They did not design it for a six core processor, and there were physical things that were redesigned. Could Intel have made it work? Off the record, I've got indications that they might have been able to. In fact, probably could have. But would it have been a janky solution that might not have had the reliability that Intel's known for? In all likelihood, yes. So was this partially a marketing decision? Possibly. Personally, I'm pretty annoyed that a Z370, for example, cannot hold a Skylake or a Kaby Lake chip. But I totally understand why Intel wouldn't want to put their stellar reputation for reliability on the line by allowing you to put a new Coffee Lake chip in your Z270 board without having fully validated it. And here's another thing you guys have to understand. Just because Intel has a spec and just because like it should work doesn't mean that every motherboard manufacturer out there built properly to the spec. It doesn't mean that every SKU will work. And when you're someone like Intel, if you say it's going to work, it is supposed to work. Yeah, this and like building to spec, uh, a lot of the times you make product differentiation by finding ways to not build to spec. You end up making a lot more people mad by trying to accommodate them sometimes than you do by just going, nope, forget it. It doesn't work. Because something that you guys are probably missing here, you look at the motivation, you go, well, it's probably money grubbing. So let's look at something like Intel Optane, which they opted. Uh, wow. Which they opted to support on oh. only Z270, was it, if I recall correctly? Uh, Optane on. It's been a while since I've been on WAN. Z270. That was painful. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. 
Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, obtain, I'm looking to upgrade, upgrade my, I'm essentially an M.2. I want to know if not. It's like I lost my pun tolerance. Okay, I, I think it I think it is uh, I think it is only two hundred series. Blah 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 blah. Hold on, there's a there's a thing on Puget Optane. Yeah, okay, cool. So it's only supported on Z two seventy. So the reason for that, it's just an M dot two stick. That's all it is. It's an SSD using the M dot two standard. So feasibly, Intel could have supported it on Z one seventy. And a lot of people might look at the, this and go, well, their motivation must be money grubbing. They just want me to run out and buy a new motherboard. Do you really think anyone at Intel is stupid enough to think that anybody's gonna go buy a new motherboard for Optane? If you had enough money to buy a new motherboard, you would buy a boot SSD, you'd buy a dedicated SSD. Optane is a value solution. It's not money grubbing. If they were money grubbing, they would shoehorn in the support, not validate it fully, and just let people buy it, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Like Ubisoft. Because the reason that they decided not to support it on Z170, and this is, I'm not gonna quote my source, this was kind of off the record, I'm actually not even sure if I should be talking about it, was that depending on the implementation, and you gotta remember, this isn't just like enthusiasts, you know, gaming boards or whatever. This is across the like Dells and Acers and Lenovo's of the world. The implementation on Z170 of M.2 might not have been up to snuff and they can't rely on these guys to roll out UEFI BIOS updates to build in the support because that would be required. So it would end up being a very confusing message. If they wanted to sell more units, they would want a wider install base of supported products. Duh. Don't you think? So anyway, I'm not necessarily happy about everything they did here, but you also have to understand that it's not always as simple as like, they're bad people and they just want your money. They do just want your money, they're a business. But also understand, so does AMD, so does Nvidia. None of them are your friends. Um, Right, that was gonna bring us really well into the whole uh, off-spec thing. Why okay, are yeah, yeah. people getting different Coffee Lake performance results? So this was uh, inspired by a tweet from Jay's Two Cents and was originally posted on the forum by, uh, oh, dang it, there's no, there's no who posted it on the forum thing, James. Um, was originally posted on the forum by, oh man. Oh, oh, this was just a discussion in our own thread. Okay, well, fine, fine, James. Uh, but here's Jay's, here's Jay's tweet. Yeah, I shared that in Twitch chat too. Cool. So you can see that our number and Jay's number are pretty close. Yeah. But then Paul's is a chunk down, and then Kyle's is even further down from yeah. that. And there's a lot of differentiation. This is a significant difference. Like, oh, yeah. With us and Jay sitting around the 1,550 range, and Paul and Kyle being in, uh, four, in the 1,400s and 1,200s. So um, one of the theories, um, and this was... Kyle's uh, chip compared to Jay's chip is almost a 300 point difference. Yeah, and that is a, that is a That's massive huge. difference in Cinebench. That's like, you know, one of your cores isn't working level of difference in Cinebench. So um, I, can't, I can't believe he goes by Gay Ben Jr. on the forum. <laughs> but um, anyway, Anthony from our team, uh, was talking about how Gamers Nexus had found that their Gigabyte board was giving them less voltage than specified, and um, he was wondering if maybe ASUS did the same thing in the opposite direction to give us better results. So it seems like there's a known issue that has to do with the boards not being fully tuned for Coffee Lake yet, where the voltages being applied might be affecting performance. So we actually have a review coming on the MSI Vortex G25, where our original script um, that I reviewed with Alex a couple of days ago had this comment on how when we stress tested it, it would run at oh. four point whatever gigahertz turbo for like, I don't know, three seconds? <laughs> and then it would drop to like 3.2. Whoa. So we got a new BIOS, fixed. <laughs> so it looks like this launch might have been a little rushed. Now, unfortunately, we weren't able to comment on that in our Coffee Lake review because as a general rule, we have made a habit 
of using only one particular brand of motherboard for our launch reviews because we have found that it means we're less likely to end up with a 1200 point Cinebench score when we were supposed to have 1550. Wow, interesting. It's like that's paid off for us so far. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, Anthony also said that one of his hunches is VRM throttling, thanks to the lower specified voltages. Um, and that could be affecting their CPU scores. And it seemed like that would make perfect sense for something like yep. what happened with that, um, with that uh, pre-built machine. Yep. Anyway, to be clear, it's not like I'm crapping on MSI or Gigabyte or ASRock or ASUS even. It's not like they don't make mistakes. They do. No. <laughs> they all do. Um, but what it looks like might have happened with this launch is that it got, it might have been kind of rushed. If you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. Yeah, you're not, go you're not going fast and frantically enough. Yeah. Type faster! Yeah. Um, so anyway, it looks like that has a fair bit to do with... Uh, with people's Coffee Lake results being kind of all over the place. Gah. Like, even, even some of ours were. Like, we have some gaming results where Coffee Lake, in spite of its faster clock speed and nearly identical architecture and more cache, is getting beat by the 7700K in gaming. <laughs> and people are like, this is impossible. These numbers are fake news. And it's like, okay, first of all, you guys can't even decide what agenda I'm fighting for. <laughs> because if I was on Intel's side... <laughs> I sure as heck wouldn't be talking about how the new chip doesn't perform as well you're as the just, old one. You're, you're fast and loose. Just yeah. whoever can hand over the check fast yeah, enough. Yeah, like, like... Boom, boom, boom. From minute to minute. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, when, when the mail... It's Friday. When the mail delivery I need arrives, new check. <laughs> I, could be, I could be changing sides like that. If your CPU box doesn't have a few hundreds in it, you ain't getting a good review. That's right. Figure it out. Um... Actually, please don't do that. So anyway, it looks like it looks like that could be to do with something like a Windows scheduling issue, which was one of the things that affected Ryzen 7 performance back when it launched. I mean, am I saying that it's for sure that? No, but 12 threads is more to handle than eight, and we already know from the past that hyper-threading can affect gaming performance negatively. So, that might be one of the reasons that, uh, and we didn't get an 8600K. I almost want to do a separate review of it because they are kneecapping the i5 like more every generation. Yeah. The 8600K is a significantly slower chip unless you overclock. It used to be what everyone purchased. Yeah. And Intel has gradually tried to move people to i7. They've tried to brand the i7 better and Apparently that's not enough, so they are... Well, I bet you that's part of the existence of i9. It's trying to be like, i7 isn't the most expensive one. That's an interesting thought. I because never thought I've, about it that well, way. Well, actually, I had never thought about this before either, but when you go to the store, the shampoo bottle example, you know, they're like, this is the way too expensive one, this is the way too cheap one, I'm going to buy the one in the middle, or if you take four of them, I'm going to buy the third one, because it's like more value than really expensive one, but I'm still getting a nice premium thing. Maybe that's some of the thought process there. All right, so, oh, you know what? By the way, people in the chat still doing the yes and no meme. That's impressive. I know, we haven't even done it. We should do a shirt. Yeah, but now it's gonna be too late. I know. Because it'll be like, like a month or two until we have the shirt It's out. our own dead meme. Yeah. I said we should do a shirt like the day that thing started. Dead memes, yes. And then we didn't. Um, speaking of dead memes, that's not really a dead meme. FreshBooks! Yeah! FreshBooks is the super simple to use invoicing tool that helps you if you're a small business owner or a freelancer. It helps you track your time with the timesheet function, manage your expenses, and keep track of who owes you what. It also has a feature that tells you when your client looks at your invoice for the first time. What's really cool is FreshBooks has all the functionality of the desktop version built into their mobile version. Very so cool. you can take FreshBooks with you wherever you go. Their support is amazing. If you have questions, you can reach out to their staff, you call them, and you will actually just speak to a real human immediately. Just like... No escalations even. Yeah. That's the only person you need. Yep. Uh, so head over to freshbooks.com slash when and enter when in the how did you hear about us section, whether you're you know, uh, running a plumbing business or teaching dance classes out of your garage or doing small time computer repair or you know, you know, console restoration, whatever it is that you do that you make a few bucks at, FreshBooks can help you spend more time doing it and less time fussing about with complicated accounting software. 
Speaking of not fussing around with complicated software, Squarespace makes it super simple to make a gorgeous website that works great on any device. And I mean, I'm sure their legal would never let me actually make a claim like this, but they have nothing to do with it. Like never goes down. Like our Squarespace site never goes down. Yeah. And I'm sure it's possible for a Squarespace site to go down. I'm it sure is. someone's has. Yep. Anything can go down. But for all intents and purposes, ours has never gone down. They've also got 24 seven support via live chat and email. It starts at just 12 bucks a month and all their sites templates feature responsive design so they'll look yeah. great on any design. Which is huge. Any design, any device. Device. Um, they've got tons of great features like cover pages, their logo designer, uh, and the ability to publish content in Apple News format. And you can start a trial with no credit card required over at squarespace.com slash when. Then when you sign up, then use offer code when, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Someone said it's down now. It's not. It's um, definitely still up. Should, do I have to prove it live? Like, uh, do I have to do this? Do I have to do this? You can. Hold on. Wait, what? What did I just click on? What? What the? Oh, I'll fix that later. Boop. It's Yay. definitely up. All right. LinusMediaGroup.com. We haven't updated this in so long. It's so old. Our team. Let's see who's even on here. Linus, uh, Luke. Yeah, we gotta get you. Uh, gotta get you removed. Wow. Hey, I don't, uh, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. Man, that's going to be really weird. Pella, Tyler, Max, Anthony, Alex, James. Uh, Ivan's not on here. <laughs> um, is Jake on here even? Oh, yeah, Jake's on here. Jake's on here. Um, I'm sure there's someone else we're missing, actually. Jake's like sort of an old member now. I know, right? He was before Pella. Yeah. He once rode from Victoria to San Francisco. I, I didn't even uh, I didn't even know that. Pella? Pella. Yeah. Yeah. Like, dude. I also crazy. didn't know he had never used a Windows computer before he started working here. I wish he wasn't physically broken, because I'd like to go swimming with him. Holy crap! But he's physically broken right now. Oh. He'll how, fix it. How's he broken right now? Just like shoulder and knee issues. Oh, and stuff. bummer. Probably from doing stuff like biking from Victoria to San Francisco. Right. Yeah. Okay. In like a really short period of time. I don't remember what it is, but like he got there really fast and then went back. <laughs> like it's, it's actually kind of amazing. Dude's super cool. All right, so Synergy allows you to solve the problem of having two keyboards and two mice. It allows you to solve lots of problems even, like being able to throw your laptop on your desk and being able to just like use your desktop peripherals and like do stuff on your laptop just Bam, so like I that. had a setup for a while where I was using my laptop a lot more than I am now. Yeah. And I got an arm that was actually just a monitor arm, and then you get a plate on it that's a laptop plate. Cool. Yeah. And then you over torque the tension and all that kind of stuff. Whatever, it's fine. And then you put the laptop on there, so I could go away and use a laptop, bring it home, put it on the arm, and then just mouse and keyboard on my whole setup, including the laptop, which is super nice because you can drag and drop files with it. You can even move stuff over really easily. You can Clipboard set up hotkeys. Clipboard transfers, yep. hotkeys to move your mouse and keyboard over. It's it's wonderful. So um, it works across platforms. So it's Linux, uh, Mac, and Windows. And they offer a basic and pro option with one-time payment. So head over to the link in the video description and or right there, seamless.com slash synergy slash that says Linus 31, but I think the one I'm supposed to give you today is Linus 32. And save 50% on Synergy today. It's pretty huge. It's a big discount. Someone in here said dual PC streaming works great. Yeah, this would be pretty helpful for it. Yeah, actually, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good idea. One of the examples I always use is, um, uh, what was it? Um, right, like coders. Yeah. Where you have like a development machine and then you also have like a gaming box next to it or whatever else. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got some more topics for you guys now. So Logitech okay. was yeah. upset that I called their keycap uh, markings stickers in the, uh, what was it? The G, hold on. G whatever. I, I can't keep track of Logitech's naming scheme. It was their wireless mechanical keyboard though. G6 something. I think it was G6 something. I don't like their naming schemes. 
Logitech G613. Okay. Um, I can't tell from that like what it is. Like a G602 is a mouse. Yeah, I can't... Yeah, I don't like it. So, I don't know. I don't uh, know what to say. I like. I know it's not as cool because G for gaming, whatever. But yeah. I would like it if it was like H headphones, M mouse, K keyboard. Right. So basically Corsair. I guess. So maybe that's why they can't do it. Wait, does Corsair does Corsair even still do that? Yeah. Like this is an M sixty five or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think not so. new though, is it? And they have like their HS, which is headset. Like uh, HS 100s, if you okay. go back, Corsair has started moving away from it though. They've gone with like Void Pro. Yeah, like what the heck is that? I know what it is. I know what it is. But like, <laughs> if I was a consumer who wasn't super into this stuff, what is it? Anyway, so they were upset, and I told them I would address it on the WAN show because we called them stickers. And this, okay, so the keycaps are textured ABS plastic that are printed and treated with a UV coating. This is a standard process. They are not stickers. Um, what we were complaining about was that dual shot would be better and because it be. it's a lot more durable and quite frankly it can be UV coated all you want and it can be or it can be treated and the, whatever the UV coating helps it is still a sticker it's a good sticker but it is a thing that it's stuck on top. Okay, yeah. Of a I was be like, it's not a sticker. Though. It's not a sticker. So what I want to say is, look, I'm sorry. It was unfair to call it a sticker. It's not a sticker. No. But it isn't dual shot. And as far as I'm concerned, a $150 keyboard has dual shot keycaps. So the wording was a little over inflammatory, but the point stays the same. Yes. Yeah. And their defense is that. If your name is Logitech, you make a lot of different keyboards for the entire world in many different layouts, and dual nice. shot keycaps might not be feasible across you know, some of these more niche layouts and or regions, and you'll generate complaints if some of them are dual shot and some of them are not. Totally get it, still don't care. A $150 keyboard should have dual shot keycaps. And that Period. like that sucks, and that's a really annoying manufacturing thing, and all that kind of stuff. And I hear that, but I would rather spend my hundred fifty dollars on a keyboard where I'm getting dual shot keycaps. It's hundred and fifty U.S. dollars, so it's a like a two hundred Canadian dollar keyboard. That's a really expensive keyboard, and it's wireless or whatever, and that's great. But I actually don't care. It's I, a keyboard. I would be I would be pretty not stoked about. Do you care about wireless keyboards? Um, I like our I like um, RGB backlighting on my keyboards. Believe it or not. So, so no then. So no. Because batteries. For are. now, yeah. 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 Um, apparently, if they had made it RGB backlit, the battery life would be like a day, <laughs> instead of six months or whatever. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised. See, and like I, I just having less cables on your desk is nice. But one of the easiest things to cable manage on your desk is your keyboard. Yeah. Especially in terms of permanent cable placement. Yes and no, actually. Because it, it goes right into your monitor stand. So a lot of time you have to like cross. Actually, I'm going to disagree with you there. I think the keyboard is one of the harder things Some to Some monitor manage. stands have cable management slots. Some of them do. Not all. Very few That's do. That's true. <laughs> That's, yes. Like, monitor makers have got to be some of the most oblivious out there when it comes to like building functionality into their product. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I, like... Uh, I guess for my desk it's pretty easy because I have my mixer right there, mm -hmm. so I just pinch those cable runs in between the mixer and the monitor stand, yep. and See, they all just hold themselves that naturally. Makes sense. But like a lot of monitors, not everyone too, will have that. Have like you know legs that come out like this, right? That can be annoying. So you but, have to okay. like go around it. The ones I'm thinking of, their feet are up and they taper down like this. Mm -hmm. You can put the cable right in there. Okay, all right, so that works. There's there, there it's it's not that difficult to manage. And I would rather, like, I understand that the battery life is going to be huge. I would rather just never worry about it, personally. So DocSwag posted on the forum, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. Dun, dun. And this is a great little spec sheet. Wow, fantastic. Um, so basically, better camera than before. Yep. Um, Spec-wise, it's a modern phone. Yep. So it's exactly what you would expect, pretty much. Four gigs RAM, 64 slash 128 gig. 
Um, storage, it's got pretty much the same battery life as the previous Pixels, or pretty much the same battery capacity as the previous Pixels, give or take. Um, DCI-P3 screens, that's pretty cool. Uh, same resolutions as before, except uh, the XL it has a different aspect ratio. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Still AMOLED. Same RAM. Okay, no headphone jack. Is this a deal killer for you? No. Really? I don't listen to... How interesting. Music on my... Like, it's it's not a positive. I disagree with it. I don't like it. It wouldn't deal kill the phone for me. If that makes sense. Okay. I don't listen to music on my headphones for my sure. phone that often. Okay. Because um, I know you're a Pixel fan. Yeah. And it's water resistant now, which I know was one of the big That's things That's a huge you, deal. I'm missing. wondering about this. I'm hoping they fixed this. It's cloth. Oh, the, uh, the 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 earpiece grill. The the, the yeah. earpiece grill on the Pixel and Pixel XL, not the Pixel Two and Pixel XL Two, is cloth. And people go in there and try to clean it, and mine's like not looking that great because it like absorbs gunk over the year ish that I've used it, and you can't clean it because if you try to scrape it, you'll rip the cloth. And right. there's pictures of people that have done it. It's so stupid. There's a lot of like really weird, stupid things that were overlooked that will hopefully have been fixed. One of them is water resistance. Uh, you've checked out the colors. Yeah. Like, kind of blue, just black, or clearly white? The names are weird. Um, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like the panda look. Yeah? Okay. I think it looks all right. I, okay. I, I think out of all of the phones, the pixels are kind of boring, if that makes sense. Like, they're not sleek and sexy. They called the design iconic. Would you agree with that? No. Oh. Well, that's... Not very nice. I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. I just think it's it's it doesn't stand out. It's not iconic. It's the like opposite of iconic. Um, and there's glass on the back, so everyone's probably just going to want to skin it anyways. So I don't know. You know, it's funny. A lot of people, a lot of people in the uh, in the Twitch chat, not upset about no three and a half mil jack. Because my okay, my thing is yeah, they have all the adapters. The main times that I use headphones on my phone is when I'm traveling, and it's usually my active noise cancelling headphones that have a carrying case, that have their cable in the carrying case sure. that I can just have the adapter in. Yep. Like, it's, I, I use headphones with my phone so little that oh. it's not a big deal. Okay, all the people who are upset are flipping the math out right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because they are upset. Okay, yes. okay, okay, I got it, I got and it. And, like, upset. in my car, I use Bluetooth. Yep. You can buy Bluetooth dongles where you plug your like headphones or whatever into it and then it interfaces with your phone so you can turn your wired headphones into bluetooth headphones yeah, they're super cheap they're, they're like, ridiculously they're like cheap five dollars they Amazon work or whatever. really well yep. they hold charge for a really long time it's it's not that bad i don't like it i don't think it's worth it i think it's a bad design move i think it's not worth making the phone thinner at all because the phone doesn't need to be thinner I think it's very stupid. It's not a deal breaker for me personally. All right, let's straw poll it, baby. We got people who want to straw poll. Okay, just everybody stop. Everybody stop talking in the Twitch chat so I can. And I can post totally this. understand okay, why it. people would be upset. Straw poll, straw poll, straw poll. Um, so I'm like I'm okay. I used to carry my headphones loose in my pocket until I lost so many ear tips and broke a fair number of pairs of headphones. And now I use a carrying case that has a little pocket in it that I keep my stupid lightning adapter Which in. Which is the same carrying case I carry and now for I'll, my head earbuds. Now I'll put a now I'll put a Type-C adapter in there too, I guess. Yeah. Along with an extra ear tip and my non-microphone backup cable. Like I'm clearly working around this, but it it is a bit of a pain in the butt for me cuz I'll go and I'll like pull them out and I'll be like, "Oh, right, I'm using that phone." That's a pretty niche use case. I know, I know. And I think you also use headphones with your phone more than most I, people do. Every single day. Yeah. Every single day, multiple times a day, I use so headphones with my phone. So niche use case on top of niche use case. Yeah, all right. And it's still not game-breaking for you, right? Um. <sighs> I mean, your favorite phone's your iPhone, isn't it? Yeah. I like the iPhone 8 best right now. But um. Like, it sucks. I don't like it. I would really prefer there was a jack there. I do not care about the thickness that you lose by losing okay. the jack. But let's talk about niche people for a minute here. I also 
still have an iPhone 6 that I specifically have so I can jack in and like like I, okay uh, you know that I listen to um, shows yeah, yeah. when I sleep yeah yeah so I specifically still own an iPhone 6 so that I don't have to have an adapter slash I can charge it and but didn't you also carry another phone for that earlier or was it an iPod or something? Yeah, because they're off cycle. Because this one literally runs all night, and the other one runs all day. So I charge yeah. this one in the morning. So, so yes, you'd carry an old I one could. anyway. So I usually would be carrying an old phone anyway. That's true. <laughs> this is true. Um, not not that it moots your point at all. I'm yeah. just saying you would have the phone anyways. I would. I would. Um, <sighs> so 66 percent of people that they were said that they were mad. Yep. And that's not surprising. And I you know what like, is surprising though is that thirty four percent said they weren't mad. weren't mad. You also which didn't, isn't surprising if sixty six percent said they were mad. You didn't ask if it was a deal breaker, because I would have said mad. But it's not a deal breaker. But it's for not you. a deal breaker. Okay. I would prefer to lose the headphone jack but gain water resistance, and no longer have a stupid cloth thing there, and right. have front facing speakers, which are super cool. All right. And the squeeze thing, I don't really care, and like a few other things that are nice about the phone that I would trade the headphone jack for. I think it's stupid. I would love to have all of those things and a headphone jack because that makes way more freaking sense. So I am mad. Um, but it's yeah, it would not deal break the phone for me. So this is kind of crazy. The last. Net the last net linked. Dun, 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 dun. So for now... It would appear as though the channel that uh, Luke and I both started our YouTube careers on yep. is um, in Kaput. limbo. In limbo it would be the most the most kind word to probably use for yeah. it. Um, so they haven't uploaded anything since three days ago when a video entitled X399 NVMe RAID Support DJI Local Data Mode No More Netlinked For Now went up. So most of the NCIX Tech Tips team is gone. So that was me at one point and was Luke at one point and is not those people anymore. Yeah. But was also Wheels, um, then uh, Julia, Anthony, uh, Riley, Jack, um, who else am I thinking of here? Uh, Riley, Jack, am I, am I missing anyone? Was... Oh, I mean, uh, Barrett, uh, Riley's, Riley's brother. Was Esther, like, was part, part of the of team? It? Esther was part of the team at some point. So, of all of those people, the people who are gone, all of them. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that makes sense. In in the last episode, he did say that he's gonna be trying to make videos still. Sometimes yeah. um, he was saying hopefully one a week, but was like, "Do not hold me to that." So we'll see how that comes out. So we'll go ahead and like I can maybe address some of the some of the comments here. Um, you know. Rip me if LTT were to ever go under. Uh, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We're good, man. Yeah, we're like super awesome and good. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people seem to be wondering about how this could happen to a channel with lots of subscribers and actually like okay viewership. Yeah. Like you're never gonna do well on like mesh Wi-Fi or whatever, but you know, the, the core stuff, Netlink, is doing 60, 100,000 views an episode. That's not bad. Um, that's That should be sustainable for a team of a couple people. Yeah, um, actually, it should. So people are asking, like, what happened? So it seems to have a lot more to do with decision business decisions being made by the parent company. So I'm not going to comment on sort of... Ugh, See, I don't want to comment on so, anything that I'm being told in confidence. Like, I still know people there, so I know stuff that, that like, people don't I'll I'll say really know. vague stuff then, because I haven't talked to these people. Sure, but you okay, can go just, for it. You can just look at NCX and how they're doing right now. Um, they're closing stores. People have been um, departed from the YouTube channel. Uh, you can see different... I mean, someone works here now that didn't before that used to work there. Um, yeah, the writing's sort of on the wall. 
Um, and it seems to be going rather quickly. That's all outside perspective. Haven't had conversations with anyone in the company stuff. So uh, there you go. It's an end of an era, and I've got to say, um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty sad for me actually, because this was like kind of my baby. Um, well, like the store that you worked out of, and I used to buy all of my. Par Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's it's kind of tough because this is something that like. I started and put my heart and soul into and yeah. became like a part of my personal identity. Like this was what turned me into a YouTuber. Yeah. And to see it kind of go down like this um, was really uh, it's frustrating kind of and sad weird. actually. Because it, it was weird at first to no longer be a part of that team like the team making the NCX Tech Tips videos when you and I did it for so long. Yeah. And then it's going to be even weirder having that not exist now. People in Twitch chat uh, are saying that we should buy NCIX. <laughs> yes, that would be, that would be, um, that would be a, wow. How, 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 how does this idea fail? Let me count the ways. Um, <laughs> Fell so hard. <laughs> buying failing companies is like a sad decision. Yeah, yeah. Buying companies That's that Silicon are Valley, clearly losing money is like good business. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, people are asking like, you know, LTT is not going anywhere, right? And it is because we don't make decisions like that <laughs> that Linus Media Group <laughs> is doing great. <laughs> Just great, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree with that. You know what, though? I would love to buy the channel. Someone in chat says, hi, Ed. Oh. I'd buy it. Oh. That would be, oh, that would be weird. I, I would buy some of the people that come with it. I'm not going to name any names, but I wouldn't buy all of them. Besides, no people come with it at this would point. Would you rename it and just make it a tech news channel? I think we could just call it, like, um, we could just call it, like, NX tech tips or something like that. We could just like change it a little bit. Yeah, because it would it be could, really weird keeping and, the NCX tech tips. And thing. we could just make it straight tech news. Yeah. Um, just get rid of every format that wasn't netlinked. Yeah. Because um, I actually, I liked the netlinked format. I would, like, I would what see a netlinked thumbnail. I'm not surprised you like it. No, but they, it is good. They changed it a lot from what, like if you look at the early ones, they were trash. Hmm. Like they changed it a lot. They made it more YouTube-y, they made it more upbeat. Um, they made it more fun. Um, and, you know, I would see a thumbnail and be like, oh, yeah, what's going on with that? And I'd click it and, like, you know, four minutes would pass and be like, oh, I just watched the whole video, which doesn't happen a lot for me. I don't watch a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. Like, I actually like Netlinked. Um, so, soon, Ed. Um, yeah, so I, would, I wouldn't mind bringing back Netlinked, but I'll tell you now that my relationship with NCIX is um, not at the best it's been in the last 10 years. And... I don't even think for a fair offer they'd be interested in selling to me, so. <laughs> I could be wrong. I mean, I could always reach out and be like, yo, you guys still want that channel? I mean, with how YouTube treats subscribers and stuff right now, it might not be too bad to just start another one. Um, I think 1.1 mil has a value because you can build up a big subscriber base back to like getting notifications faster than you can like build a subscriber base from nothing. Yeah, we wouldn't be building a subscriber base from nothing, though. And I would also just be, like, I would be, like, taking back my baby. No, I know. Yeah, it would, know. that would be part of it. I know. Yeah. I think that's probably most of it. That's a big part of it. Yeah, okay. Why don't we just put it that way? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, honestly... I completely understand that. If I had to, and this I can comment on because I haven't really talked to anybody about it, but if I had to guess, rather than, you know, do something sensible with it, they're just going to run it into the ground. Um, if I had to guess, I would say they're just going to pull what Tiger Direct and Newegg did before them. They're going to having no concept of what made it good. Oh my God, they're going to bring in there. some random outsiders to try to make videos. They're going to have <sighs> no idea why people watch videos. They're going to try to just sell stuff. And it's going to be a complete disaster. Um, and it's going to just crater. I'm so, going to have to like archive some of these old videos 
Yeah. I get like this. Do you remember doing this? Oh, the uh, ultimate water cooling guide part three, where we had to like build the whole thing, then tear the whole thing apart, and then like build it again or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That was awful. <laughs> that was like, was that an all night shoot? I think that was like two all night shoots. I don't remember. Because uh, there awful. was part one, two, and three. Right? How many views does it have? Did it at least get a lot of views? It did all really right. good for that time. 778,000. Not bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we got time for maybe one more topic. Um,. Okay, it's the Intel show, apparently, because I'm super, super not stoked on this. Um, posted by... Oh. oh. Do doesn't say who on the forum. But, like, uh, War STM. This is just... Intel will no longer be providing per-core turbo frequencies, um, making motherboard tuning impossible. So you won't be able to alter your overclocks oh. per-core. <sighs> So Extreme Tech says, when we queried Intel as to why they've decided to no longer officially disclose per core turbo frequencies, they said, we're no longer disclosing this level of detail as it is proprietary to Intel. Intel only specifies processor frequencies for base and single core turbo in our processor marketing and technical collateral, such as ARC, and not the multi-core turbo frequencies. We're aligning communications to be consistent. All turbo frequencies are opportunistic given their dependency on system configuration and workload. BS pretty annoying basically what you're doing is you're making us go measure it yeah why why are you wasting our time this is like this is like apple not disclosing the capacity of their batteries that did make someone take it apart it's like you're not concealing anything you we'll figure it out you're just inconveniencing everybody That's for not even no reason literally not even reverse engineering it's just trying something like, it's, it's not difficult to figure out. I, I just can't even. It's just extremely annoying for all of the consumers. So, yeah, I guess that's all I really had to say about that. I'm sort of surprised. Okay, someone is posting salt in the chat. I was surprised people weren't doing salt tips. Salt tips. But Did you see that uh, clip? No. I, I ate salt, and it was a mistake. I, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Because I was talking about like people being salty about uh, How much did something, you have? something. Well, there was like one of those big ones, and I was like, oh, oh. no, no, it wasn't like fully open or anything. But like, for a bit, I was actually okay, and I was gonna just keep going with the video, and then it like hit me all at once. It was pretty, pretty bad. Because there's salts that you can eat, like if you get like salt mixes and stuff, you can have like a what is the really small one? A tablespoon? Yeah, a teaspoon. A teaspoon, yeah. Um, I'm not very. Uh, up with the whole etiquette thing. Aim's gone. Okay. I'd be a lot more sad if this was uh, MSN. Yeah, I was sad when this was MSN. There you go. I, like, had a dream about MSN, like, in the last three days. I don't remember exactly when. But man, if it came back suddenly, I would jump on that train so fast, and then they would Skypeify the crap out of it, and I would bail out so fast. Um, Microsoft Edge is coming to iOS and Android. Cool. <laughs> I guess I can use that for like accounts that I don't want to have signed in on the other ones. I don't know. Um, I just used other browsers for that, so it's fine. And there's going to be another BlackBerry. Uh, there's a huge thing on this that we haven't talked about at all yet. Oh, right! On, like, any platform. Right. Oh, wow! And we're doing it at the very end of the show when oh, no one's watching. Holy crap, we suck! We're really... It's it's funny, because uh, we're, like, in the advertising business, and then when we need to advertise our own things, we just suck at it. I know, we're not the greatest marketers. Um, also known as, like, we often just don't market it. Anyway, there's a BlackBerry phone that's coming. Oh, cool. Um, holy crap, how have we not talked about this? Float plane. Um, kind of a big deal. Uh, Scrapyard Wars is up. People don't even believe me that it's there. Really? Yeah. Okay, now hold on, I got this. I, I will show the people. And like, we don't have a trailer. We had a trailer for the, the like, cleanup vlogs. We okay. didn't get a trailer for Scrapyard Wars? Well, we're like, we had to delay it a bit, so we're... Oh yeah, it's a two week window. A two-week window. Uh, long story. Oh. Long story, essentially, we have to... Yeah. yeah. We could still have a trailer. Yeah, yeah but it would be too okay. early. 
Yeah. So no, that no, I, that makes sense. Well, we'd have a trailer for float plane. Uh, yeah, but we're gonna have it. Um, uh, uh, it, it, it trust me, it makes okay, sense. Sure. We don't want to tease something two weeks in advance. Well, we want to tease it a they week get in it advance. On float plane. No, no, but um, I know. I get it. Yeah, we we don't want to create I get it. more salt than yeah, we have to. I get it. But it's so, there. What do we got? Tech Quickie, bias lighting as fast as possible. That's a good thumbnail, it's pretty. That is actually pretty good. Behind the scenes demolition vlog. Yay. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, we demolished our sets, so that was a thing. Uh, this was a simultaneous release, the Core i7-8700K. So you guys have probably seen that. The ultimate mega workstation guy. Oh, I think that was a simultaneous release as well because of um, the Cooler Master K sponsorship. Trackball mouse review. Yeah, Logitech I saw that. Logitech released a new trackball. It's kind of neat. Yeah. I wonder how well it's going to sell. I have no idea. Probably not particularly amazingly. Yeah, but like I'm sure they're prepared for that. Like I'm sure it'll all be fine. Scrapyard um, Wars. Heck yeah. Uh, Scrapyard Wars Six Part One, sponsored by Dbrand. Holy crap. Jay's two cents. Holy crap, Dimitri from Hardware Canucks. Holy crap. Hold on a second, hold on a second. I, I, I got like a quick spoiler. I got a quick spoiler. Uh, holy crap, you can hardly recognize Linus <laughs> in this outfit. How will anyone ever recognize him on the street? He's going incognito. I love the glasses, wait for it. It's coming. And he's gone. Incognito Linus. Gone. Um, so yeah, it's 40, 42 minutes of Scrapyard Wars greatness, and the episodes are rolling out weekly on, I think it's either Saturdays or Sundays. So um, yeah. get signed up for Flowplane if you guys want to be watching Scrapyard Wars. Right meow. Uh, handy Tech Under 100, stuff for your stuff. Oh, cool. This is Another one, one of those. Yep. We are finally bringing back Handy Tech. Stuff for your stuff? Um, this is a pretty cool product. That is actually the size of this entire computer that contains a GTX 1080. Oh. Yeah. That's really that's a, small. That's a 1080 for scale. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Is that the card right this there? This is the 1080 right here. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Delitting a $1,000 CPU. Is oh, it worth God. the risk? <laughs> what would you put the risk at? Too hot for $1,000. <laughs> no, I mean like percentage-wise. <laughs> Ah, ooh, hard to say. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, the full RGB water cooling system. Even the fittings are RGB. <laughs> this is actually one of the better performing videos like of all time. Oh, wow. D-Litting did really well, too. Yeah. Um, this one, too. What does scroll lock do? Killed it on TechWiki. <laughs> or killed it on uh, Floatplane. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's guys, cool. uh, jo go join... Go join the plane. Go join the club. It's not going to be called a club anymore. Nope. We gotta. We gotta get out of the habit. We don't. We don't Just say join the club. Plane. Just get on the plane. Get on the plane. Just uh, get your pilot's license. Just get on the plane, man. Um. So head over there. It is three bucks a month. We cannot promise that that pricing will remain after the launch. Um. When uh, it goes onto the other site. We mostly promise that it won't. Yeah, it won't. Yeah. So you should probably be on float plane before the site launches and we do not intend to announce when the site will launch because we're big douches. Yeah. <laughs> we totally could, but we won't. Yep. <laughs> so get on there. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning into the WAN show. We'll see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. Okay, do you mind um, yeah. doing the I merch? It. Also, I haven't even ended the stream yet, but I gotta go finish shooting that thing with Jake. Okay, I'm also gonna try to find a time for us. Are you still down? Yeah, I'm totally still down. Okay. Because I, de we definitely haven't figured out a time yet. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. It's probably like a 7:30. We can go. Squarespace. Get, go get some fast food and then head over there. Fresh books. That works for me. Sounds good. Yep. Cool. Synergy. Bye everyone. Yeah, I'm gonna reset just this. Hung out outside of work. In like probably like over a year. So long. <laughs> last, I didn't, no, no, last time was when you came over and we talked in the living room. And then the time yep. before that was when you came over and we wrote out on World's Most Comfortable. Yeah. It was like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone.